This flagship Peugeot 3008 is an unknown entity, according to the model's product manager. That statement makes it sound slightly more exciting than it is, given that we're dealing with a diesel-powered family SUV with 178 bhp. The reason that it is still is a relative unknown for the French manufacturer is because an equivalent top-spec GT model wasn't offered in the 3008's previous life. It wasn't a difficult decision to reinvent the vaguely crossover like 3008 MPV into an SUV for this generation. With SUVs becoming less of a niche option and more of a booming mainstream preference, the PSA Group took the decision to let Citroën take care of the shrinking MPV market with its established C4 Picasso family, leaving Peugeot to reinvent the 3008. The 1.2-liter petrol and 1.6-liter diesel variants we've driven already have shown that the 3008 has substance to match its style. This version's 2.0-liter diesel engine, paired with a 6-speed automatic transmission, is the only power plant you can have in the new, range-topping GT spec. It's the same engine found in the 308, 508 and DS5, but it's only expected to account for a small 5% slice of the 3008 sales. Is it worth a look? One of the 3008's most significant areas of improvement over its predecessor is the interior, and it remains a standout positive for this GT model. Every trim level gets a generous level of kit and a high-quality cabin, with a 12.3 in digital instrument panel and an 8.0 in touchscreen. GT adds adaptive cruise control and some styling upgrades over the equipment you get with GT line, as well as a full leather interior and electric massaging seats. This 2.0-liter diesel is the most powerful in the range, but its 0 to 62 miles per hour time only squeaks in under 9 seconds and on the road it doesn't feel particularly brisk. There's plenty of low-end shove, though, and the drivetrain manages to cope with the power, unless you try a particularly aggressive standing start on greasy asphalt. Don't expect performance thrills from this engine, though that could be saved for a potential GT version, which has been mooted. What you can expect is decent fuel economy. The 2.0-liter diesel is very competitive against its rivals in that respect, being faster and yet more fuel-efficient than an equivalent Nissan Qashqai and Renault Cadre. While it's the gruffest-sounding of the 3008 range, it's still quite refined, and especially so when cruising below 3000 revolutions per minute although heavy acceleration does bring some diesel boom. A sport mode adds weight to the steering but makes it a bit too heavy, so things are best left in the normal driving mode, in which the steering is accurate and feels much more naturally weighted. Body roll is decently controlled through corners and handling is generally good for an SUV, but the 3008 feels less engaging than a Sitka. GT spec also adds 19 in alloys which bring a harshness to the ride although never to truly uncomfortable levels. The 6-speed automatic gearbox, available on all engines apart from the 148bhp 2.0-liter diesel, is pretty good at judging shifts, but the changes aren't lightning fast. They're quick enough to cope with the gentle family drives this car will likely be subjected to, though, and the paddles on the steering wheel are responsive. The 3008's driving position is comfortable, although it could do with a little more adjustment in the steering wheel's reach, and while visibility is generally good, the view out of the back is slightly restricted because the rear screen is quite slim. There are a couple of handy practical additions inside, too, such as three ice fix mounting points, most rivals have two, and the front seat can fold flat to help with extra long loads. Plus the 3008 has one of the biggest boots in the class. The 3008 counts SUVs such as the Sitka, Volkswagen Tiggin, Renault Cadre, Hyundai Tucson and Nissan Qashqai among its rivals. There's plenty of quality to choose from in the class, then, but the 3008 still manages to stand out thanks to its quality interior and tidy handling. This version also comes with loads of kit, a strong engine and an impressive interior, all of which sound promising until you consider the price. For £32,995 it's more expensive than most of its SUV rivals, and while you get a lot of kit, you don't get all-wheel drive and it doesn't offer enough pace to compensate for its cost. 
If you want a quick 3008, it's worth bearing in mind that the 1.6-liter petrol engine version offers similar performance but costs £6,000 less. The cheaper 3008s, which are also more efficient, are too good to warrant the extra outlay on this model. The 3008 is a great SUV, but we'd sooner point you towards a lesser specs model.